So up next on the Ron Johnson show, I have Jason Zucker. I mean, the pleasure of Jason Zucker, the model, the hockey player, the philanthropist, the sex symbol, uh, and a friend of mine, <laughs> Jason. How you doing, <laughs> brother? Thanks for having me on. No, thanks for joining me. So, you know, first off, I want to say this. So I ran into Nick Bukestead in the Arizona airport. Super random. Him and then Riley Tuff which I didn't even know who Riley Tuff was. I just knew he looked like an 18-year-old kid. And then everybody later is like, how do you know Riley Tuff? And I'm like, I don't. Who is that? And so then, of course, I had to go Google it later. And then OK Fan, I brought it up. And people are like tweeting me, it's Riley Tuff. He went to Blaine High School. When yeah. you walk through an airport, I mean, you're not Nick Bukestead's height. Like, do people see you and say, oh, that's a hockey guy? Or are they like, who is that guy with the blonde? No, the only time I tell everyone this, the only time I ever get recognized is if I'm with Carly. You know, I feel like it's like, I, I don't know if it's, you know, I she's definitely more famous than me, especially in Minnesota. But then, um, you know, on a, for the most part, it's like people see Carly and then they're like, could that be Jason? Yeah, okay, so then that's that's got to be them together, right? It's like, I don't think they'd recognize just Carly or just me. But if they did, it would be her before me, for sure. So it's the tandem. So you guys worked. So if you ever like are not with so. her, then you're basically an 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 so Jason, when you look at the Colorado Avalanche, you look at the Tampa Bay Lightning, then you got the Warriors and the Celtics. And of course, everybody talks about numbers. ESPN brings it up all the time. Why do you think a Tampa Bay Lightning team having a chance to possibly three P and a Warriors team who hadn't won in you know recently, but then won their fourth? Why is that a bigger story in the sports world? You know, I think basketball is just uh, in the in the media's eyes a bigger sport than hockey. I mean, it's you know it's right up there. You know, just behind the NFL, and uh, you know the media exposure for for those guys is is nonstop. It's constant, and so I think for for the NHL getting this deal back with ESPN is massive. Um, you know, for so long we were off ESPN, you couldn't even find us in the top search bar on ESPN.com. Right, you had to go to the the arrow and find more sports, and we were in there with you know underwater basket weaving and things of that sort. So it was kind of like. You know, it, it made it tough to have that extra exposure. And, and it's unfortunate because, you know, you're you're missing out on guys like Nathan McKinnon and Connor McDavid and Sidney Crosby mm -hmm. and Ovechkin and, you know, guys that are world-class talents that are, are that are changing the game from from guys, you know, like Gretzky and Mike Bossy and, you know, people like that. So you're you're missing out on a lot of those those generational talents, unfortunately. Um, but you know what? The the hockey purists obviously got to see it. And now being back on ESPN, I think, is is absolutely massive. It, it's definitely grown the exposure. I think the numbers are showing it now with this, you know, with this Stanley Cup final being being absolutely massive for the league. So I think it's shown and it's, you know, it, it obviously helps that it's great hockey. You know, uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs, and, and obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I think it's the best playoff in the world. And, uh, you know, I think it's the hardest trophy to win. And I think it's something that um, is, you know, extremely fun to watch and for people that, don't even know the game, just turning on a playoff game, you know, you see the intensity, you see, you know, everything going into it, uh, you know, makes it a lot of fun. And so when you look at it, and again, this is my first hockey experience was this year. I got to go to a wild uh, playoff game. Um, I was invited by, uh, I think it's Todd Fredrickson or Todd Fredericks um, okay. of the wild organization. He's with the Iowa wild, but he also does marketing. And so he happened to come on K fan and I was making jokes about being a black guy, never going to hockey. And he literally DM me speaking of your wife, talking about her DMS. He DM me like, Hey, do you really want to go to the game? And I was like, I thought he was like, I'm like, what are you serious? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Like <laughs> it's a random Tuesday and we have kids. Yeah. And so, uh, we found somebody to kind of keep an eye on our kids. Our 11 year old, she's good enough anyway to just put her sister to bed. Uh, but we had yeah. somebody to watch our kids. We went. And so as I'm there, one, being at a hockey game is a totally different experience than watching it. So at yeah. that point, I was hooked. My, I was so hooked. My wife got me a Father's Day Wild t-shirt. So now I actually have like a t-shirt to wear to my next game. It took you that long? It did. I'm not going to lie. I've, on, I went to one other hockey game and that was Gophers versus Badgers. 
in like 2002 or three. It was like my, my senior year. It was like after my senior year, a bunch of former players, we were just in town and we were at a, at Sally's bar on campus and everybody's like, all right, let's go, let's go sneak in the hockey game. And so we snuck in the back door with our Letterman jackets. At least jackets. that was the good WCHA then. So at least you got some good hockey. You know, and I don't even, I'm not going to lie. We were just, we were just at the top drinking. Like we never yeah. even, <laughs> I don't think we ever even sat down and watched the game. I um, but I, I, I did enjoy the towel swinging, you know, the, the puck flying, but how do the casuals like myself, how do the officials within the game, the refs and the keepers of the game, because the playoff game is exciting. How do they keep it exciting? Where it's not so many stoppages, not so many BS calls, um, where the game just gets slow and boring to where people are like, oh, you know, I, I'm not getting into this. Like, how do they keep it exciting like that? Or what changes can they make to keep the stars on the on the ice and, you know, mm -hmm. not get into the BS? Kind of like how basketball does it. I mean, they give LeBron and, and Kobe and Steph, they give them a little leeway to make sure they stay in the game. Yeah. You know, for us, it's it's a little bit different because it's such a fluid game, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's one of the few sports that you don't call a play every time you're out on the ice, True. right? When you step on you know, in the middle of play, you're changing on the fly is, is what we call it. You're changing on the fly. And, you know, and at that point there it's, you're just reacting, you're just playing the game. So it's hard to do that sometimes because in football, every time you have a play, you have a stoppage, you have a reset, yep. right? Even in basketball, when a transition, yeah, you've transitioned baskets, but for the most part, transition point guard gets at the top, he calls his play and then you go and you, you yep. execute that play. So for us, you know, it's, it's, that's a very different aspect of it. So, that's also why it keeps the pace of the game up so high because you can go five, 10 minutes without a whistle, right? But then you could also go 30 seconds with 15 whistles, you know? So right. it's such a fluid game in that aspect that it makes it tougher to, you know, necessarily keep the momentum up. The one thing I'll say is when it comes to playoff time, the penalties drop significantly. Correct. You know, there's a lot less penalties, but the good and the bad of that is that when there's more penalties, you see more plays. You see your star players more because they're all mm -hmm. on the top power play unit. You know, you get a lot more of the star players in those games. But at the same time, you want to see, you don't want the refs to ever be a factor in a playoff game, right? It goes the right. same for the NFL and the Super Bowl this year, right? The refs don't call a single thing until the last two minutes of the game and all of a sudden it's it's talked about. So, you know, you hope that the refs are never talked about in a, in a game of any kind, of any sport. And so... Typically in the playoffs, they back off quite a bit. There's a lot less penalties. There's a lot less action on that front. It's just more five-on-five -five hockey and just play the game. And, and for the wild, you know, and you, and you play with Sidney Crosby. Um, you play with Nick Bukestead, um, or at least you guys cross paths. Um, cross paths, but, yeah. But when you look at, you know, Kir Kirill Kaprizov and Sidney Crosby, you know, what, what – and, and even Connor McDavid, you know, what do those generational-type players have – that so many people like where do they get like what do they have like where do they get that from like what is that to me it's all a mindset right like there's guys that have more skill than than Crosby more skill than some of these guys if you talk about pure skill if you were to put them in a situation say do this mm -hmm. right do this singular thing right here but they they can't put it all together right you probably know this from football it's the same in hockey you know those people that are on your team that are the best practice players in the world yeah. Right. You're like, how is this guy not scoring touchdown after touchdown, goal after goal? And they just can't put it all together. Right. It's a it's it's a large puzzle that you got to put together and, and put it, you know, all in action at the same time. So that's what makes it hard. And that's why those guys are so good. They think the game better than anybody. There's things that Sidney Crosby does when we're sitting on the bench and we're his peers. Right. We're supposed to be of somewhat equal peers. And you you watch him do things and you say, how did he even think of that? Right. And then imagine what the fans are thinking at the same time. Right. They're like, OK, this is it's just insane. But there's also things that the fans never see that as a player you see and you realize how hard it is. And you say, I don't even understand. It doesn't make sense. Kaprizov has that same aura about him. He's he's that type of player. You know, I have a really hard time, you know, personally, just, you know, being being around these guys for so long, um, comparing anybody to somebody like Crosby, you know, like mm -hmm. when people. I, I've, I've never been a big fan of that, honestly, for any sport when you have a first overall pick or somebody and it's like, oh, well, he's Tom Brady. Right. I don't know. You know, that's that's hard to say that he's just like somebody like that. But, you know, when you talk about a guy like Kaprizov, not only is he a highly touted prospect, even though he was a second round pick, I believe, um, he's come and shown it, right? He's come and shown it. You know, everybody that had any type of, you know, 
skepticism about him in any way is is now you know rooting for him or you know something of the sort so he's he's an incredible player the wild are really lucky to have him um you know i'll tell you i sure as heck don't want to play against him <laughs> and <laughs> And we just had Father's Day. Like, Father's Day just passed. I love seeing, you know, just men in general. Because I think so often in the world, um, men can be denigrated. I mean, if you think back to the Al Bundys and the Homer Simpsons, you know, it was always dad was an idiot, blah, blah. And then you did have the good dads now. You look at some TV shows. They do have the good dads out there. Um, and you're one of them. When you look at Father's Day, being a professional athlete as well, um, what did that mean? What did Father's Day mean to you? And how do you navigate that world of professional athlete, but still dad? Yeah, for me, it's about finding time for the family always, right? I mean, their family is truly number one. And I think everyone says that, but not everyone pre actually follows it. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone preaches it, but actually following through with the actions is sometimes different. So for me, it's about making sure that I always have time when I'm home, you know, from road trips, when I'm here in the summer, you know, I tried to obviously number one take things off Carly's plate because she does ninety nine point nine percent of it all throughout the year. Um, you know, I wouldn't be able to be playing the way I am without Carly. You know, handling the kids and, and getting them where they need to be. And I know she's got it absolutely dialed in and taken care of all the time. So for me, when I get home, I try to take a lot of that off her plate because I know it's for a short time, right? I mean, it's it's a couple of months, and I can do that for her. But realistically, for me, it's about, you know, still instilling the, you know, the, the morals and the principles of your family and what you feel as a person is right for your kids and the way to raise them. But also about, you know, showing them that path, right? And the path isn't necessarily professional sports. Mm -hmm. It's letting them enjoy that ride with you because it's it's such a, a unique experience. And, you know, I try to bring Hendrix. Stella's a little bit too young now, but bring him into the rink and just hang out with the guys and be a part of it because, you know, 10 years from now, he's going to be able to say that he was hanging out in the locker room with Sidney Crosby right. and just, you know, being being buddies. Like, that's that's an unforgettable experience for somebody of his age that right now he has no clue how to appreciate that. But for me, it's, you know, at some point he will, and, and that's going to be the fun aspect of it. So for me, it's about just being present, I suppose, is, is probably the best way to put that and, and really making sure that it doesn't all fall on Carly because 99.9% .9 of everything else does. And so I want to make sure that I'm present, giving them what they need, you know, being there for activities all summer and enjoying that side of it. But then also when, you know, when they're out in Pittsburgh with me and we're doing that, it's it's including them in, in the journey and, and really making sure that uh, they feel a part of it. Because for me, they're a massive part. Of it. Yeah. And, and Hendrix is me. Like I was I was in the Steelers locker room as a kid. I got to hang out yeah. with Terry Bradshaw. I got home videos of Mel Blunt, you know, Donnie Shell, Franco Harris. Uh, me and Joe Green, you know, like, so all of those guys. And when my dad passed away, all those guys came to his funeral. So um, I, I definitely, Tony Dungy, you know, so I definitely yeah. know he's not going to remember. Cause I didn't, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It took me until about the age of 27 to really look back. Cause growing up, I'm just like, oh, those are my dad's friends. Cause they would talk crap about me. They yeah, would say yeah. stuff about me. Lynn Swan would make jokes. Um, you know, Mel Blunt would say I'm soft because, you know, back in the day, they used to beat the crap out of each other. We don't do that now. Um, <laughs> and so, but now I can appreciate it. Like now talking yeah. to Tony Dungy now, you know, texting Mel Blunt, I can yeah. appreciate that. Uh, but last one for you. So you, you kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, it's not always about professional sports. Jason Zucker, if you were to look at yourself in the future, you got Tom Brady, who's now, you know, looking at getting behind the camera, Tony Romo, uh, you got JJ Reddick, you got all these former athletes, uh, I saw PK Subban grab a microphone, you know, like a lot of guys are jumping out there now and doing this. What, what does Jason Zucker look like at the age of 45? What, what is that going to do? Well, I hope I look just like this, <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't hope I don't age much, but no, I mean, for me, I, um, I personally, as of today, and this could change, of course, I mean, you know, life takes you in, in crazy directions sometimes, but I personally don't want to be back in the hockey world when I'm done. I want to be with the family. I don't want to, okay. you know, coach. I don't want to be a scout. I don't want to do any of that. I want to enjoy my kids and, and help raise my kids. And if I, I don't even want to coach Hendrix. I don't want to coach Stella. I want to be dad, right? I want to just be dad and, and, and enjoy that. Um, now, again, that could change, you know, for sure. Um, I personally, I'm not into the, the TV aspect right now either. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with, you know, a lot of these, not, you know, Charles Barkley pops out to me, right? Like he's a guy that's not afraid to call somebody out and tell them, you know, X, Y, and Z is wrong with you and whatever. And like, I'm never going to do that because, you know, 
Charles has been in their shoes, right? He's had those people talking about him. He's had that situation, the opposite. And it's, it's difficult sometimes. So like, yeah. I personally am not the person to be able to do that. So for me, you know, I'm trying to set up the business side of things for our family and, and our, you know, our, uh, our matters that way and just try to make sure that I have something to fall back on as far as business and keep me busy. But I don't want it to be anything in sports as of now. Um, but, you know, again, who knows later on down the road. Yeah, you might be the Dinah, like, mites head coach. No, <laughs> see, I don't want that. Like, for me, it's I want to I want to just be able to watch and just, you know, I'm not even I'm the guy I'll tell you this, like, when Hendricks is on the ice, he, he, he's with a, you know, skating coach right now. And he, you know, takes lessons and whatnot. Like, I get off the ice. And the only thing I ask him is if he had fun, nothing else. Okay. Like, I don't want him. I'm not like, you need to work harder. You need to try this move. And you know, like, I don't even want to teach you anything. Your coaches are going to teach you. That's your coach. I'm your dad. That's it. I'm out. Well, maybe you'll be part of the, like, Mighty Ducks remake. Like, the, the 2020, the, or what, what are we in? Like, yeah, like the 2035 Mighty Ducks. You'll be the Emilio Estevez. Like, you might be an actor <laughs> on Disney+. <laughs> Plus. <laughs> if they want to pay me for it, I'm in. Like, I'll do that. But I don't know if I'm the guy for the job. 